All right, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another episode of uh, VGF Strat Corner Podcast. Uh, as we're trying to do, got another guest on the show today. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have to kind of educate me a little bit, because I always say K-A-B. Is that usually how everyone says it, or do they spell it out? Or? It's actually, it's cab. I was wondering that. Uh, I was like, does he say K-A-B? I mean, what, what does he do? <laughs> it's, it's short for something, and it's really funny. It goes back to my Soul Calibur 2 days. Um, my original name was Killick a Beast, okay? Oh, shit. I actually and know had, that name. <laughs> yeah. And it had a double meaning. I was playing Final Fantasy X at the time, and there was a tie-in with that. And then it was also, obviously, a Soul Calibur name. But when I started going to tournaments, everybody would get it wrong, or they were tired of spelling it out all the way because it's kind of long. So eventually, people just started putting K, capital A, B. And I found it was much easier, so I just adopted it from then on. Nice. I, I don't you have to be old school to know it's Killica Beast. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, I have heard the name Killica Beast. I never made that connection. I have no idea yeah. why. Well, I know the, um, maybe uh, you know him or talk to him, but uh, Robbie uh, from Chicago, uh, XCTU, uh, a lot of people know him nowadays as Heart Nana. Heart Nana. Yeah, but yeah. originally I think he even had it all written out like Zhenghua, Talum. Cassandra mm-hmm. user, like yeah. it's all sorts yeah. of ridiculous. So he just shortened it down, and now he doesn't even play the game anymore. But yeah. I guess that's how it goes. So uh, you are our resident expert uh, this time around, um, and we're doing Craig uh, for all those listening. Uh, and I know some people have been hype for Craig for a little while, uh, and it's kind of been a shame we haven't gotten to him. I was trying to get uh, John, John the Hammer Solus. I don't know if you know uh, know him or talk to him at all, but. Uh, I love that guy just because he cracks me up. I've never met him. I mean, I know he's a Marduk player and he posts a lot, but uh, I've never been to the same tournament that he's been to, oddly enough. Uh, you don't need to. He's a fucking scrub. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I love to troll on that guy because he looks like a miniature version of Sully from Godsmack. So I, I keep, I've heard that. I keep fucking telling him that. And it's, uh, it's awesome. But His reputation precedes him, definitely. <laughs> yeah, which is really funny because he in the Tekken 5 days, he was like the man, you know, like ever. He was like the new up-and-comer and whatever, yeah. and uh, everyone wanted him at uh, their tournament, and then all of a sudden uh, he kind of stopped playing, but whenever he was in the area, they're like, yo, Solis, you got to come out to our area. Like, whatever, man, you're a scrub. Yeah. I don't know why everyone else doesn't know this, but I guess that's <laughs> how it goes. So, uh, so kind of, okay, you gave us a little bit of a background. You were Soul Calibur two player, so when did you start getting into Tekken? When did you start doing that? It's, it's funny because I've always been into Tekken. Um, I was that guy who was like, oh, I'm the best in my town. I can beat everybody, you know, but I was really such a scrub back then without knowing it, oh, you know. I think we've all been. I, I go to the movie theaters on Friday nights and get 40 win streaks and be like, I'm the shit. I do like a three-ring circus with gin for juggles and, and you know, think I was hot shit. Yeah, ten strings all the way. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I was, I'm from Florida originally, and uh, I lived in West Palm at the time. And I decided to go down to this arcade called Flippers in Miami. It's it's closed now, but it's an old, pretty famous arcade. And there were two players from TZ. This is when I first got on TZ. Um, Inca, who still posts, who's a pretty well-known Yoshi player. <laughs> and uh, Trix, who was a really good Tekken Tag player. So I went down there, and they just, they destroyed me, obviously. You know, there was no contest. And it just showed me that there was a much uh, deeper aspect to the game that I wasn't aware of. So at that point, I started getting into the rabbit hole and learning about frames and block punishment and all that good stuff. That seems, and this was around Tekken 4 days. Oh. <laughs> that seems to be, like, always the story. It's like with Tekken Tag. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, I got into Tekken. I thought it was the shit. And then I went to a tag tournament, and somebody just bodied me. Like, it was no no big deal. Like, going out for from ice there, From there, I always played Tekken, uh, but not at a competitive level. I actually... This is the same time that Soul Calibur 2 just came out in the arcades, and for some reason that game just really clicked with me. I loved it. It was uh, really fun. I learned a ton about it, and that was the first game I was really competitive at. Um, did pretty well at a lot of different tournaments, uh, placed pretty high at some of the MLG events they had, um, had a really good Evo showing. That's a whole other story, though. <laughs> and um, after that, Soul Calibur 3 came out, and I'm sure you know that was trash. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> I was like, well, I should probably hop back on this Tekken deal, and that's when I started playing 5 and DR. Nice, nice, very nice. So did, did you always start with, uh, well, I, I mean, you went back to the tag days, but as soon as Craig hit the streets, were you all, all about him, or did you move? I played I played Marduk in 4, and I played Jin in 4 when I had to. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> if you're playing to win, you play Jin. 
Yeah. Epic, uh, but Marduk, Marduk definitely, and then Marduk all through 5.0, Marduk all through DR. Nice, nice. Boy. And obviously in six as well. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's just get into the uh, the Marduk discussion then for uh, yeah. for T6. So yeah. I've uh, whenever I have a guest on, I I lean on them because I want uh, I want them to get their uh, their strats and everything out. So well, let me ask this to start off the discussion. Where, where do you think he's he's strongest, and where do you think he's weakest? Like, where, if you were a Marduk player, what should you be worried about, and what you should, should you be doing? His strength, his number one strength, without a doubt, and I'm sure most people know this, is his Oki. His Oki is you know, far and above better than most characters in the game. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of a guessing game. It's kind of high risk, high reward in a lot of cases, but it really pays off when you when you guess correctly. Um, and the other strength I would have to say is his range. He he can really, uh, with certain tools, zone out a lot of characters, uh, which is helpful. Uh, I remember back in the day when he first hit uh, in T4, everyone bitched about back four. That was like you could just whip a jab, and all of a sudden you're eating a foot. Back four is gone now, and I yeah. really miss it. One of my, uh, it's one of the things I re- wish they did not take out. Yeah, and for those who aren't familiar, if like T six is your first game or with Tekken, I mean, he used to have his back four is completely different than what it was, and it, it was just it, it was so strong. It what was, it used to be was a uh, it was a high, but it was a, a power wall splat, and it would hit from like three to three and a half character lengths away. Was retarded. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was good. It was so. Awesome. And uh, funny enough, it's one of the things he lacks now is a good move that power wall splats from a distance. Um, you have to be almost right up on the wall to get people in a power wall splat situation, yeah. which I really miss back for. Yeah, yeah, most Craig players do. But uh, that's yeah. uh, but in Craig, like I'm glad uh, everything you said like as embo- embodies what I think Craig is because when I think of Craig, I think of high risk, high reward, tackle Oki. And, like, yeah. there, there you go. That's what it is. Yeah. Ooh, got somebody at the door. <laughs> he, the dog thinks there's somebody at the door, but there's not. I think we're just going to let him outside for a second. <laughs> That's okay. I go through this. <laughs> um, as far as weaknesses go, his punishment is trash. His punishment is really bad. Oh, yeah, as, uh, we'll, lacks, we'll get into in a minute. Yeah, I know he lacks that, uh, that 15 framer. Well, he lacks the 15 framer, and even, like, he doesn't have a good 12. His 13 is good damage, but it's really negative on hit, so it's like, do I want to trade the momentum for the damage? It's, it's hard. Yeah. I, I, I never have ever, ever, ever envied Craig players and the, <laughs> the kind of thing they have to go through a match because, I mean, it's you have to be a good guesser. I mean, you have to be in your opponent's head to be really good with Marduk. And it, uh, yeah. it's, I mean, it's tough because if, if you just have that one day where you're just off, everyone's guessing you right, I mean, you don't. He doesn't have really anything to kind of turn momentum. Just in it's it up. It's really funny um, when I'm playing somebody, like especially in tournament. I'll break it down almost psychologically into three different char- or three different types of people that I'm playing. Scrubs. I just expect them to fall for the same setup over and over again. So I'll just do you know, if something will hit in the back, I'll do it and I'll do it again and I'll do it again. Um. Good players, like decent players, I'll do a setup, and then I'll think that they're going to think that I'm going to change it, or, or do the same thing, so I'm going to change mine to counter that. But then really good players, like if I know they know the Marduk matchup, they're probably thinking, oh, I just got hit by this, he's going to do something different, so I'm going to stand up the same way, and I'll try and counter that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, I, I don't envy that. That's too much thinking for me. <laughs> I, I don't want to want to try to do that. I like straight simple 50 50s and yeah. then, then i'm done but uh one another thing that i always thought uh that was kind of sad with craig is i never i always thought he was missing that really 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 good mid poke because he mm-hmm. has two of my favorite strings in the entire game i love one down two i love that string yep. and i love down two four especially down yes, two four yeah. that thing i love down two so four as well. juicy but um yeah. like he you know down forward one is his launcher um, I mean, you have down four two. You know, that's a pretty quick mid poke. But aside from that, he's—I always thought he was really, really lacking in that. And I'm—I'm I'm a down like a generic down one abusing four because that's mm-hmm. what I do. That's where I come from. So yeah, he, ne- he never had that for me. So I always had a, a little bit of a problem playing with him. But right. something you gotta gotta work around. He's—I I don't know. I guess like it, poking in general isn't really his strong suit. It's um, not. It really isn't. Because I mean, and, and even even if he did have a good poke, 
Like if he had something that was, you know, 13 frames and zero or negative one on block, like a lot of the cast has, it, it would be really hard to take advantage of it because his hitbox and his sidestep is so trash that, you know, any usefulness that he would get out of it by sidestepping shit is almost out the window. Well, so it's like, okay. I would love to have it, but it's uh, it's not necessarily crippling in my opinion. Yeah, I guess I'm just used to characters that just poke, 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 and keep poking. So True. He's de- True. He definitely never fit my play style, but it's always fun to watch a good Craig player go to work. Um, cause, I mean, it just gets it gets crazy. Because I mean, he, like you said, you know, he's a high risk, high reward character. He's got all these setups, all these oaky. So you never quite know what's going to come next. Like, okay, is yeah. he going to go for this, or maybe this, or maybe this? You know, and if he misses, you know, he gets he gets blown up. But yeah. you know, if he hits, then they just oh, it, it gets really crazy. But uh, let me ask this though. So Craig, in general, like he's he does great damage. His juggles mm-hmm. are really really good. Um, yep. And whenever he hits you, uh, even standing on the ground, you know, not in a juggle, it, it really hurts. You know, his tackle does good damage. But if you if you knock somebody up, most Craig players that I know, I'm I'm a cheesy person, so I just do da- damage. But I know most people cut their juggles short, and then they go for Oki. So for those who might not be familiar with Craig out there, like if you slam somebody to the ground, well, what's your next move? What what do you do? What kind of Oki options do you have? Uh, what are we? Which move are we talking about? Uh, I, I will. Ooh, that's a good question. I uh, well, it's up to you. Like, let, let's start with um with that the command throw. I mean, I know most of his grabs leave him in really good Oki position. Um, right. but yeah, let's start with that. Let's go with the the grab. All right, we're gonna go. Let's see. Let me get my list real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So starting off, he has his two quarter circle forward command throws. Um, quarter circle forward one plus three. Quarter circle forward two plus four. Um, both go into mount. I actually, uh, most of the time, will not take the mount transition, and I will end it just to go for the Oki afterwards. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you know this about these throws, but if you do the mount transition, the throw only does 15 damage, and then you have possibility of mount follow-ups. If you do not do the mount transition, they do 25 damage, and you get decent Oki off of both of them. So if you go to the mount, it doesn't give you Oki? I, I thought it did after after you get your mount follow up. In Tekken 6, in BR specifically, um, the frames, the advantage you get after successful mount follow ups are a lot less than what they used to be. Um, you still get decent advantage off basic one or two mount follow up, but the one plus three, the guillotine choke, and the two plus four, which is like a, a leg breaker or something, those have almost no advantage. Like a get-up kick can interrupt you out of pretty much anything you're going to do. Um, the 1 plus 2 I'm a big fan of. Um, it doesn't have advantage, but there's a really interesting setup off of that. That's uh, It's almost 2D. You get a, There's a cross-up in Tekken. It's funny. If they stand straight up off of um, the 1 plus 2 follow-up to mount, which is the double-handed Mongolian chop, if you do an up-forward 3 plus 4 stomp and they stand straight up, it'll hit them in the back. Nice. Right. Which is interesting. We, you can follow up with uh, it's a mix up from there. They can you can do a back turn four, which if they don't duck, it'll hit them for beefy damage. And um, if they do duck, uh, I think a back turn down one is is guaranteed. Um, but then obviously they can back turn hop kick out of that. So it's just kind of a mix up at that point. Nice, nice. Yeah, we've mentioned a few times on on uh, on our podcast that we love our, our cross ups whenever we can get it. And uh, Dan yeah. Dan has mentioned uh, a few times like. On certain characters, because of their stances, you can do a, yeah. a huge jump kick and hit them in the back of the head. So, so we're always looking for those those weird, goofy cross up, uh, cross up Oki games, or or even I guess it's out in the open in some cases. But yeah, we, we love that cross up stuff because it's just something that probably shouldn't be in Tekken, but it's really funny when it happens. It looks goofy, you know, and you're, I'm definitely like ah, TD. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. So okay, so that's off of those grabs. So, is it kind of the same? Well, I know the the up four three plus four is kind of a unique uh, situation, but I mean, does he have the same sort of situations on his other grabs? So, like I was saying, tackle. I um I will use tackle in situations mostly on Oki, like off a regular hit knockdown move. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll use it to force them to try and break it, or if I know it's a certain distance and it's unbreakable, I will definitely use it, and I'll try to go for my follow ups. But in these um, throw situations where they could shift to uh, mount, I don't tend to take them because I think the Oki 
You get 10 extra damage off the throw, and then the Oki is uh, much better, in my opinion. So off the quarter circle forward, 1 plus 3, um, it's like a suplex. Um, he flips you over his head, and, and if he doesn't mount, you uh, leave your opponent face up, head towards. If they stand straight up, you can hit them. And when I say stand straight up, I'm talking about if they push up immediately and you do your follow-up on the first available frame, it's almost like you have to really time these specifically. Yeah. Um, but you can hit them in the back with a, a down forward one launcher and continue with your uh, your back turn combo there into Oki, which is good. It's um, down forward one, one, down forward three, one plus two bound into stomp, which gives you more Oki, which is nice. So that will beat them if they stand straight up. Um, if they side roll in either direction, you can ground throw them. So there's your there's your good mix up right there. And then the only the only hard part is if they roll backwards. Um, you can't down forward three one them or or uh, down forward one them to to hurt them in that situation. So what I like to do is uh, it's something I call the chase Oki, which is for Marduk it's really good. As you can probably know, Marduk has one of the best throw ranges in the game. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? You do forward two plus four, and it, it goes way, way out there. So if you get an opponent in a situation where they're face up, feet towards, or they're face down, feet towards, and they roll backwards, their back is exposed for a moment um, at the end of the roll. So if you roll, if you chase them down, if you dash towards them, and they're just holding back to mid guard, you can forward two plus four, and you can back throw them. Pretty easily, especially with Marduk, because of his grab range. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of characters have that uh, those kinds of setups where if you roll away uh, in those positions, you know, you most characters get like a big string to launch. I know, like Wall, for instance, gets junkyard pretty easy uh, if they guess right. So but you can uh, chase them down and do a down forward three, down one in the back as well. But the timing for that is a little bit harder just because it's a slower move. It's a it's a 17 frame move. So. And the only way they can beat this, uh, the back throw, is to roll back and commit to a um, ducking guard or roll backwards and do a rolling get-up kick, which either one of them you can bait and you can launch them for it. So it's, it's just, again, it's, it's back to the mix-ups. Back to the mind know, games. Yeah. Back to the mind games. So that's off the, uh, the regular quarter circle forward throw, the 1 plus 3. Um, off the 2 plus 4, it's a similar situation, but it's better because they're closer to you. And um, you can beat stand straight up with a down forward three, down one in the back, and down forward three, down one will also beat back roll. So you have a real good 50-50 there. Um, they can, and I forgot to mention in these situations, you have enough advantage to where if they do a get-up kick, you will hit them out of the get-up kick with the launcher as well. Nice. So that's good. Uh, the only problem with the core is circle forward two plus four throw, which is like the power slam, I think. Um, a ground throw will beat them if they lie still. Or if they roll in one direction towards the uh, four, or if they roll towards the foreground, it'll beat them. But if they roll towards the background, it'll whiff off this certain throw. Hmm. So that's fine. knowing that one side that'll lose to is probably your best bet to uh, to wake up safely off of that throw. But so that's his two quarter circle forward throws. Good, good Oki on those. I always get uh, messed up with the um, the ground throws whenever I'm playing against Craig. Because it, it's another one of those weird situations where it's a complete 50-50. You don't know which one he's going to do. And, exactly. and even worse, unlike regular grabs where you can just kind of sit there and mash the break, it's a little harder. The timing is more strict on those breaks. So I, is. my break percentage on those grabs is ridiculous. It's like 90% fail rate. It's, it's so bad. The funny thing is, too, that works out in Marduk's favor is that, you know, when you're side rolling on the ground, you're hitting a punch button, you know. Yeah. Most of the time, and down, or a regular punch button to roll. So if you're pushing the wrong one, then you're going to get thrown because you just wasted your break opportunity. You know. I hate that. Just relaunch. So gay. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know his uh, his his regular one plus three grab. Does that leave him in the exact same position, like same sort of options, or? This one is really interesting. I found something about a month and a half ago that was new. And um, it was actually an accident. I didn't really realize it could happen. Hey, the best um, things are. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's like, did that just hit? And you try to recreate it, and you're like, oh, shit. So off a regular 1 plus 3, I love the throw, first of all, because it's a side switch throw, whether you break it or not. So I use it a lot with my back against the wall, because that is one place I really, really hate to be with Marduk, is my back to the wall, because 
he is such a big character. The wall juice most characters get is just ridiculous. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you can find me uh, trying to get any advantage and using a 1 plus 3 to just get the hell out of there. But um, if you land it in open ground, they're a little bit further away. Um, they're in a feet towards, um, face down position. So again, you have the chase okey, you know, run down, back throw, or down forward, three down, one in the back. If they stand straight up, this is the weird one, you can hit a full uh, forward two, down one, two, launcher string in their back. Which is a high, too, yeah, which is weird. Really so if they stand straight up, you hit them in the back with a high, three hit launcher string, Unfortunately, you can't do a bound juggle off of it because the two recovers really slowly, especially off the back turn. So you just have to settle for like a down back one uh, while standing one two. But all together, the combo does like 86 damage plus the throw damage. So it's over 100 damage if they stand straight up. Um, also to note is if they stand straight up off one plus three, you can do forward two plus four and it'll back throw. Nice. Which is nice. Um, doesn't really have anything in the way of ground throw. Um, that one's more of like a, you can confirm ground throw, like if they just stay there on the ground, or if they side roll, um, you can run up and try to ground throw, but I don't usually try to go for those things. I try to just guess on anticipation instead of um, reaction, because a lot of times that will uh, get you killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then off, of his, uh, off his command grab, the 4412, that one uh, just leaves you in the same situation as the other command grabs, right? Because you would do your, it would launch, then you would do your juggle, and end with yeah, there's there's your damage option, and then there's your Oki option. Um, Oki option is just regular down forward three, one, two, bound into um, a forward three plus four stomp, and they're back turned. And then you have really good Oki off that, which we'll get into later off of like a... Usually you set that up off of like a wall stand mm-hmm. juggle. That's the typical situation you see it. Um, then you have your damage juggle, which is... It does uh, upper 70s damage. I think it's like 79 damage. It's just uh, sidestep right, forward three, two... Then you do um, down forward three one two stance cancel uh, back one two and that'll get you um, seventy nine damage I think but no oki and then the other one is lower damage I think it's like low to mid sixties but you get decent oki off of it which is still silly back back to what I was saying when we first uh, first started the discussion you know like he he does really really good damage and for those yep. out there who aren't like really familiar with damage and stuff. If you are a character and you're not doing Oki setups or anything, you're just going for straight damage, 70 to low 70s is really good is damage. Good. And he's doing 60s plus Oki. So, yeah. I mean, that that's just, like, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next grab. You sound like you got your notes going on. I got them. I mean, every every throw has something. Um, let, I'll go over the two crappiest ones first as far as Oki. Um his regular 2 plus 4 grab doesn't really give him shit. Um, awesome. They're just too far away on the ground. Um, you can back 4, and if they stand straight up, it'll hit him in the back. And if they roll backwards, it'll hit, it'll hit them as well, but for, like, you know, 10 damage or whatever stupid number it is. Mm-hmm. So that one's not so good in the Oki department. And then um, his Valtudo stance, 1 plus 3, which is the big-ass choke slam. That one doesn't give any Oki at all. They're just way, way too far away on that. that I so, think that, that does a little above average damage, doesn't it? It does like 45, 40, something? The, the regular choke slam off of Valtudo oh, yeah. stance um, is 40 damage, I believe. Yeah. It might even be 35, I don't know. Like, I know his 2 plus 4 throw out of stance is uh, 35. So I could be wrong on that. The regular 1 plus 3 might be might be 35 as well. Yeah, I thought, but, I thought the, uh, the big choke slam did a little bit more damage, but... Yeah, I mean, you definitely would want a piece of it. Might. It might. It um, might. So those are my two least. I don't use those very often because um, he has he has other you know one throws and, and two throws for for damage and Oki and whatnot. So I don't use those too often. Um, my one of my favorites, actually probably my favorite, is um, Valtudo Sands two plus four because it's like it's just the perfect situation. They're right at your feet. They're face up, head towards, and you have options to be. Every, it's, it's a real 50-50. Um, stand straight up, roll backwards, and get up kicks will all lose to down forward three, down one launcher. So that's right there. And then lying still and side roll gets ground throw. It, and both sides on the side roll as well. It's, it's a real, you know, that's your guess. You know, I'm going for big damage either way there. And if you guess wrong, it's, uh, it's hurting for sure. Nice. I like those. I like my... I will say, as an anti-Marduk player, like, if, if you're playing against a Marduk, if you guess right 
and he tries to ground throw you, and you stand straight up, launch him. Yep. It's just free launch, hop kick, whatever you got. It's just take your damage. Um, I get away with it a lot. I don't know if people are, are surprised or scared or what, but if I whiff a ground throw, a lot of times I'm not getting hurt like I should, which I kind of expose myself there. But Yeah, I'm uh, I'm hop kick happy, so <laughs> as uh, soon as I see an opening, wake, I go for wake it. Wake up, hop kick. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, another thing with the uh, Valtudo 2 plus 4 throw, um, near the wall, when their back is to the wall, it's also really good because um, you can't do the same Oki. You have to uh, replace uh, down forward 2, 1 instead of doing down forward 3, down 1 because the down forward 3, down 1, the first hit will hit them in the back, and then they spin around on the wall. They do that weird back turn wall tech. Yeah. So you don't get guaranteed damage off that. And you replace it with down forward 2-1, and then you get a face-first uh, power wall splat, to which I like to, um, you know, if it's the end of the round and I just need a little damage, I'll do some random ground-hitting move. Otherwise, I'm going for a ground throw. I'm going to I'm gonna link a ground throw off of that and try to take, you know, another 60, 70 points. Yeah. Just so that very good. throw around 60, 70 points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So silly. Let's see, what else? We got... Um, the jackhammer, the, the giant swing motion with one. Uh, that's a really good throw. It got a damage bur- uh, boost in second six. It went from 45 damage up to 50 damage, which is nice. Um, it's got decent Oki, not the best. You don't get a launcher in the back, unfortunately. Uh, you do get, if they stand straight up, you can get down forward 2-1, which is meaty damage. It's like 40. I think you get like 41, 42 damage off of it for hitting uh, both hits. Nice. So if they stand straight up or roll backwards, you have that. And then if they stay still on the ground, you ground throw, and it'll turn into mount because it's a side ground throw. And if they, it's another one of those ones where one direction is safe to side roll, and the other one will get you ground throwed. Hmm. So that one's not too bad. Um, then we also have the uh, the backbreaker, which is quarter circle back one plus two. This one again, this one does not have the best Oki. Um, it's uh, ground throw will not hit. Anything unless they lie still. If they lie still, it gives them, it gives you a uh, a mount ground throw. But if they side roll in either direction, it's not going to hit. Um, yeah. If they stand straight up, <laughs> we don't if they stand straight up, you can hit them in the back with back four, and that's about it. So it's good damage. It's nice. Um, something I do a lot off of that throw is uh, his down back four stomp, which is a stomp that only works when people are grounded. Ah, I love that stomp. It's it's good damage, and if they stay on the ground, it'll hit. And otherwise, they have to block it low. So it, it can kind of train people to want to get up and block low off that throw, and then you just, whatever, throw your launcher. That thing is so meaty. Like, it just, every time it, it, it comes out, it, I mean, you just know you're, you're talking business. Like, boom. Yeah. yeah. God, I, lo- I love stomps. And stomps are my fucking favorite. So, that was one of the first things that drew me to Marduk, was I just liked the way he looked, and he just looked brutal. And I was like, that's me. I'm going to, I'm taking that. <laughs> I, I like that. I like, uh, yeah, that's brutal. That's me. I dig it. He's <laughs> oh man, I like that. I like that. I have to steal that. Yeah, it's totally brutal. So that's <laughs> that's pretty much it for his uh, regular throws. He does have his two crouch throws, which um, if I'm going for a crouch throw, I almost exclusively go for um, down two plus four. I hardly ever ever use them. It's it's really really far and few. Um, there's a couple situations we'll talk about later where I might use when I can kind of trick people into getting up ducking, but um. His down two plus four crouch throw, I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's one of these brutal throws where he, like, he basically grabs you by the shoulders and knees you in the face and, like, throws you away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is awesome. <laughs> um, in open field, if you land that crouch throw, you can do a down forward two one, and it'll beat quick stand. It'll just uh, float them for not a ton of damage. I think it does, like, 25 damage or so. But it's still, it's it doesn't look like you should be able to get anything in that situation. So people a lot of times will stand straight up because they're like, oh, he's not at my feet. I'm in a good wake-up position. I can get up safely when, you know, you can get an extra 25 damage off of it. Yeah, his limbs are just so ridiculously long. Yeah. Near the wall, if you hit it with their back to the wall, you can actually do down forward 4-2 bound down forward 2-1. So then you're getting an extra, like, 45 damage off of it. So, you know, and, oh, and, and near the wall, the other thing is, um, it's really dangerous because it sets you up for ground throw as well. So they're either side rolling or they're getting hit by a down forward 4-2 into bound, into combo. So not a bad idea at the wall, but I just I try to avoid crouch throws in general. I don't I don't really care for them too much. Well, because you can just break them, right? Just like regular throws? 
No, they're uh, they're an ambiguous animation, just like a ground throw. Ah, so okay, so, so at least you have the fifty fifty going for you a little bit. It is a mix up, but it just looks really stupid when you whiff a crouch throw on somebody's face. That's true. Well, yeah, you look cocky. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you look, look super. You cocky. look cocky, and it's just you're right there for whiff punish. It's just uh, I don't do it often. I don't know, man. That'd be clutch, like final round, grand finals, Evo. Yeah. <laughs> Boom, dead. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if I have the balls for that. I would uh, so have the balls for that. But I guess uh, I would. that's why I wouldn't be in grand finals. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know. the, uh, the, one, the one other throw that we need to talk about, which has amazing Oki, is his back throw. Um, he has two of them. He has a, a 1 plus 3 back throw and a 2 plus 4 back throw. I pretty much exclusively use the 2 plus 4 just for the Oki and for the way it looks. I don't know if you know it um, just by me saying it. But uh, I've nicknamed it the Prison Rape. Uh, it's a pretty interesting animation. He, he grabs you from behind and, and pins your arms behind him. And then he does a full backflip and lands on top of you. Okay, I do know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So that's the Prison Rape. I love it. It's a good throw. Um, it does 60 damage. And then the really, really mean thing about this throw is that the advantage you get afterwards, like if you turn head analysis on and you see when you recover and when they recover, you just get tons and tons of advantage. And with that advantage, you can do a lot. Um, if they backwards, stand straight up, or do a get-up kick, uh, down forward 3-1 will beat them. And a lot of the other situations I was talking about where down forward 3, down 1 will beat a person rolling backwards, it's like a float rollback beat into a little damage into bound. Um, off the back throw, if they roll backwards, you're getting full launch in the back, like down forward 3, down 1 hits clean in the back for full damage and then bound. So that'll be three options. Also to note, which I've done um, in tournament to a player, I won't name any names here. Oh, oh but, um, no, see, now now you're going to make me ask. <laughs> all right. I'll, well, he's, well, first tell us what you did, and then we'll see who, right. who the victim was. Off of his back throw, um, you can do another forward 2 plus 4 and get another back throw. Oh, that's <laughs> So I was in tournament, and uh, I did a 1 plus 3 throw. The guy rolled backwards. I chased him down, got the back throw. He stood straight up. I got the other back throw, and that was the round. It I was, was going to so say, that had, that's so much damage right there. This was in DR, too. So it was it was round over. It was done. Oh, wow. Ouch. Yeah. So who, who was the victim? Who was this? It was uh, Real Law. Oh. Yeah. Juan's cool, and I owe him a rematch. Like, I beat him that tournament, but I haven't played him since. <laughs> they came down to Miami one time for a tournament. And uh, I beat him then, but we haven't played since. And plus, man, Law is a really hard matchup for Marduk in, in BR, so I'm not looking forward to when he chases me down. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm definitely uh, definitely aware of that because I used to play Law um, and was almost strictly Law in T5 and uh, when T6 first came out. And, uh, yeah. you know, the resident Craig player around here is, is Solus. So I got a lot of practice with him, and he was all hype, and the, the only – only a couple of times I've ever played him in a tournament, I've won. But Law is, is a really good matchup against Craig. So, and one of the main problems with that matchup, like we were talking about earlier, is uh, down two three with with Law. You can't launch punish it. Yeah. So okay. it's just like, what's what's the uh, disadvantage of me throwing it out? You know, I might as well just throw it out to try and interrupt your shit because I'm only going to eat jabs, or I'm going to eat down forward two uh, down forward four two, which is going to leave me at disadvantage, and I could possibly down two three you again. Yep. So. It's just, it's rough. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I'm well aware. Well, in uh, for whatever reason, like Law's hop kick, it's really good at popping him out of Valley Tudo. So, yeah. I, I don't know if it's just a Law thing, but because uh, I know his his hop kick is really goofy, especially now, it's really goofy. It hits way lower than it probably should. But Marduk's uh, Valley Tudo sidestep, um, it. I know all movement kind of got a nerf in 6, but uh, his, his Valtudo sidestep in, in DR used to be really good. You could kind of cancel it. You could do down 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4, sidestep, down 3 plus 4. And it was uh, really mobile. It could get you around a lot of stuff, surprisingly. And uh, that is no longer. That, <laughs> that does not work in 6 anymore. You get hop kicked. You can get just hit out of it all over the place. Well, I know they nerfed uh, down back 3 plus 4 as well. Yep, right? so, they nerfed that as well. Now, that was, I... That was sh- in, in, go, ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying... That was the shit. <laughs> that, that move in DR, so much. I was uh, I liked the move. Don't get me wrong; it's a good move. But if you played against Marduk on a consistent basis, it was not a good move because you could see it on reaction and chase him down and launch him. It was like no big deal. Um, 
my roommate at the time was a really good Mishima player, and I would get electric almost every time I used it. And then I actually played uh, Funny Kid, Mark, um, from the Northeast a couple times up in Philly, and it was the same thing. I would just, like, sit there. I'd see his setups for it. I'd just chase him down and down forward one him in the face for it. So it was good, um, used sparingly, and it, especially if you weren't used to seeing it, but it got uh, – it got exposed after a while. Well, I guess it's uh, it just kind of fits the high risk, high reward profile because if if you use it exactly. and it gets you out of a situation, they're stuck, you know, yeah. still swinging and hit yeah. nothing but air, and then you're going to launch. Yeah. So now it's uh, like you said, the range got nerfed on it, oh, so it's it's almost not really useful yeah, it's anymore. Garbage now. That was so sad because I would I would trashy Mardic player, and that was like my thing. <laughs> I just <laughs> used the fuck out of that move, and not anymore. And you just yeah. Fucking home. Yep, yep. Uh, that's pretty much it for throws and throw. Okay, we just went over every single one of them and pretty much all the options. Nice, and, and that's good because I mean, if, especially if you're learning to pick up Marduk, I mean, you need to know where you are, what your situation is, and what kind of Oki you can get off of that. Because I mean, it, it changes. I mean, you went through that yeah. whole list, and it's it's sort of the same. You know, it's kind of the same idea in each situation, but it, you know, not exactly. So you have to know how to tweak it in every little situation so that you can get the, the most out of uh, your Oki game. And with him, you know, he's he's got so many weak areas, you really, really have to take advantage when you have those opportunities. Something I learned a long time ago uh, playing Marduk, and something I pride myself on, is figuring out and finding those Oki setups. And a lot of it comes from um, just running through his move list and his frames after each Oki situation and being like, can I get an I-12 to hit in the back? Can I get an I-13 to hit in the back? And finding where the cutoff is, and then seeing if it's a hitbox issue, too, because there's a couple throws where you can get a certain I-14 mid to hit in the back, but another I-14 mid won't hit because of a hitbox issue, you know? Yeah. So you really have to go through and do the nitty-gritty and, and test each one, and each throw leaves you at a different advantage, you know? You're not going to get the same window of opportunity for every throw, and because of that, um, sometimes it's almost a just frame to take advantage of the throw Oki because you have to hit your move on the first recovery frame in order for that for that move to hit in the back. Um, a, a really good example of that was in DR. Um, he could hit off a 1 plus 3 air throw, which we need to talk about air throw Oki in a second. Um, off a 1 plus 3 air throw in DR, if they stood straight up, you could hit a full down forward 3, 1, 2, forward 1 string in the back. And uh, but it was it was really really tight timing. You had to hit that shit immediately, and um, it's just something to practice. You know, it, it doesn't come easy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I, I know the feeling because like uh, I I actually switched characters again, but I, I was uh, an Armor King player, and you know I guess I still play Armor King. But uh, he has a his his Oki is good, but in certain situations he has a really rough time hitting people when they're uh, face up, feet away. Or, yeah. you know, the reverse situation where, you know, you stand up and you get hit in the back. But he has some exactly. stuff where he can get, like, a string, but the God, the timing is so, so strict on it. Yep. You really, really have to be on your toes and, and practice it. You can't, uh, another thing for Marduk players, if they're just learning him, um, you, you pretty much have to pick your, pick your option beforehand and know which one you're going to do in retaliation to what you think your opponent's going to do. It's not a situation where you can see what they're doing, and react to what they're doing, in most cases. The only situation I'd say that doesn't apply is if they side roll and you're going to try and hit them in the back after they stand up when they side roll. But otherwise, you need to commit to your option um, immediately or else it's not going to work. Yeah, no, and I think that uh, that applies to most of uh, most of your game, like whoever you play when you're playing that yeah. game. I mean, there are some things that you can see, but a lot of times you need to make a decision. If you hesitate, yeah. you know, you're going to come out a couple frames too late the window of opportunity is yeah. gone. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, so you mentioned air throws. Okay, educate yes. us. All right. Um, I personally like to use 1 plus 3 air throw over the forward forward 1 plus 2. Um, the forward forward 1 plus 2 got a damage nerf in BR, and it does only 5 more damage than the 1 plus 3 air throw. So for me, 5 damage, unless it's going to end the round, which... You know, you're splitting hairs at that point. Like, can you really see five points of damage on the bar? You know, yeah. it's like, I don't know if I'm going to try that. Um, the forward forward 1 plus 2 air throw only has one Oki option. If they stand straight up, you can float them with down back 1 into wall standing 1-2. It does 19 damage. You know, we're talking peanuts. It's not really, 
Not Marduk style. You're not trying to tic tac people. You're yeah, trying to half life launch life. them for seventy damage. Yeah. Half life. You know? Absolutely. So a lot of times I'll substitute the every time really I'll substitute one plus three arrow. Um, you do the same juggle. It's not like you're sacrificing any juggle damage. It's just you do your juggle, and at the very end you either pick one plus three or forward forward one plus two. Um, now off of the one plus three, he's got pretty good options. Um, he has enough advantage to beat get up kicks with the launcher, so that's initially right there. You know, especially if I'm. A lot of times I like to test the waters and, and throw out like a down forward one immediately after I do that throw the first time to see what the opponent's going to do, especially because it's such a favorable position for the opponent where they're in that situation where if they do a, a get up three, it'll give them the launch into bound combo. You know, so a lot of players get greedy and they're like, oh, I want to hit this and, and take some bar. Fucking everybody gets so, greedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I try to test the waters and throw out down forward one because that or down forward three, down one will will beat both get up kicks, uh, mid and low. So that's initially right there. That's your that's your juice. Um, if they roll backwards, you can hit them in the back with a back four or a down four. Um, you know, not again, not great damage, but just something to deter them from doing that. Um, you also have the chase down Oki okay, that I mentioned a lot. The chase down into back throw or chase down into down forward three, down one. But the only ways to beat it being to commit to a, a duck or commit to a rolling get up kick, which can also be baited and launch. Um, so you have those. Um, ground throw will beat side roll uh, both directions off one plus three air throw. So that's another thing. And it also obviously beat life still. So it's pretty juicy. Now, as I mentioned before, in DR, he had a really, really strong option to beat people standing straight up. He got a whole string in the back for, like, 70 damage plus frames with a mix-up afterwards. Um, they toned that down in BR. It no longer... For a long time, we didn't think anything would hit in the back. It was either a speed issue or a hitbox issue with down forward 4-2. Um, that move... I'm going to talk about this later, but uh, down forward 2... Or down forward 4-2 has an ass hitbox. It's, it's bad, really bad. <laughs> Um, it's a 13 frame mid and it'll just whiff in all kinds of weird situations. One of them being this Oki situation that I thought would work. Um, so standing straight up for a long time was your safest option against that throw, the air throw, um, which then turned into a, you know, pretty much standard mid low throw guessing situation. About two weeks ago, I discovered that you can do a forward forward two which uh, is his quick high elbow. And if you time it right, it will hit them in the back. But this thing is hard because, as I'm sure you know, um, doing any forward-forward move off of um, in a buffer situation is just hard because you have to hit the first forward on the last frame of recovery and then do the next one immediately, like as soon as you recover. Yeah. And, and if you fuck so up, I mean, you get a completely different move. <laughs> you get forward too, yeah. which isn't terrible, but it's, it's hard to hit. But it's there. It's it's something that I was really glad I found because I'm going to practice it. I'm going to make sure I can do it at least at a decent consistency. But um, it's a, it's an option. People need to know their options. And uh, if it hits in the back as well and they tech roll, they have to break a tackle. It's at that distance where um, they can't do anything to avoid it. And that's pretty much it. Off. Uh, I think 1 plus 3, Arthur, that's, that's pretty much all the, the basics. All right, cool. Okay, so two two plus four, so do you ever advocate using that in the air? Yes, there's one situation where I will use that, and that's only because it has longer range than the forward one plus three air throw. Oh, no. oh yeah, I guess it yeah, just in general has more, more range. So if you think your one plus three is going to whiff, if you hit like a really far distance launcher and you think they're just a little too far to hit that one plus three, then I'll probably use the two plus four. So do you? How do you think his uh his running options are? I mean, are they? I mean, do you think they're any good or? Um, I don't really think they're good. They're, they're not terrible. He he has pretty much your standard running options. You know, your one plus two cross chop. He's got his slide. His running three is ass. I don't know if you know what it is. <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's really slow, and you can get floated out of it. Yeah. They at least. Yeah. The funny thing is in DR, um, it didn't even have advantage. It was plus one. For that giant move with this giant man running at you and, like, throwing his whole body at you, you only got plus one off of it. So it was like, what the shit? Um, now you get plus six, so if you do manage to get somebody to block it, it's decent. But uh, other than that, I don't think his running options are very good. Okay, so 
we're kind of talking about like all these grabs and all these okies and stuff. Uh, I'm sure you have some notes there about his wall game because his wall game is really nasty. Yep. Uh, yep. He has the the one two jet, you know, the jab, uh, jab bellow two though cancel stuff. So it, mm-hmm. his wall carry is is really good too. So well, tell us some of the options that he has at the wall once you once you get him. Most of the time, um, I'm going for wall throw. Um, because of Oki, again. Um, we'll talk about that in a second, but uh, it's your most damage. You're going to get 35 damage off the wall throw alone, and you're usually doing pretty good damage to get them there. Um, most of his combos off his regular launchers, like down forward three, down one, or uh, down one plus two, you're going to get a little over 100 damage. You're going to get like 110 damage with the combo and the wall throw, plus Oki after the wall throw. So... Can he That's generally? Can he usually fit anything in there before you do the wall throw, or do you just have to go for the straight wall throw? Only on bigs. Only on bigs can he do the wall throw. I guess that's um, somewhat. Can he? Do, can he do like a like on Jack or Kuma? You can do like a down forward three one wall throw. Um, in certain situations, like your wall carry is generally going to be launch two, down forward three one two, um, Valtudo cancel. Down forward four two bound, and then down forward three one two. Um, now off of that down forward three one two, that last one, if they're close to the wall, you can tack on that last forward one, which is an elbow off the down forward three one two, and that will give you that kind of power wall splat, and you can follow it up with the uh, wall throw after that. But it's a really specific distance, and it's hard to get used to. So if you're not comfortable with it, just go for the wall throw. Nice, very nice. It's not that like if you get a if you get a power wall splat like right at the wall, it's definitely not the most damage you can do. But again, you get Oki off of it, so it's kind of a trade off, and it's not that much less damage. Um, like pretty much the standard Ender, if you're not going to do wall throw, is down forward four two bound, um, down forward two one, or Valtudo stance down one plus two, which is the low mid. Um, I don't do the low mid just because it has bad recovery and you waste all your your uh, advantage afterwards. But down forward four two down forward 2-1 is uh, going to give you decent advantage and your your best damage off of, like, a power wall spot. But only, like, five or six more damage than the wall throw. So so what's the Oki, then? That you have um, off the wall throw? Yeah. Off the wall throw, um, get-up kicks will lose to your down forward 4-2, which is your knee to your double overhand. It's, like, 38 damage, but, again, disadvantage on hit. Uh, so that'll be get-up kicks. I find a lot of times, I don't know why... Um, I don't know if it looks like it has disadvantage or they're used to doing this against other Marduk players, but um, I find a lot of opponents will try to get up kick me after a wall throw. I don't know why, again. But uh, down down forward 4-2 will take care of that. It, uh, except, again, this is a hitbox thing. Against small characters, um, Zhao Yu, Elisa, uh, Lily is one of them, and a couple others. Fucking Elisa. Their get, up, their get up three, Elisa, yeah. Their get up three will go under his down forward four, which is a, a freaking mid knee that he scoops from a, a downward direction to upward, but somehow it whiffs. Stupid little bitches. Always these little I, I girl know. characters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that that'll beat your uh, your get up kicks. Um, if they side roll in either direction, you got your ground throw. It'll hit either direction, but oddly enough, it will not hit if they lie still in this situation. <laughs> so. In those situations, I'll go for like a power um, ground hitting move, like a back one plus two or his stomp. As I say, down, down back, back four. four. Yep. yep. Down back four, one in doubt. Yep. And then the weird Oki off of this comes from if you commit to a down forward four two to beat the get up kick and they side roll and then do a get up kick or stand straight up, the second part of the down forward four two will counter hit the get up kick or um, like bound float the uh, the stand straight up. So people a lot of times will think they're safe, like, oh, he just whiffed his, his first move, so they'll go to roll away or they'll go to stand up or get up, kick you, and they'll get hit by that second hit because it has good tracking. Um, so that's that's the other thing that I, uh, I use a lot. But you have to be careful because the move is uh, launch punishable on block, down forward 4-2. Is like negative seventeen or something. Yeah. So it hurts if, if they know about it. Yeah, and you mentioned that, you know on hit down forward four two is negative. Uh, negative four. Yeah. Hit. Which I actually always thought played into his game well, um, because we we've talked about you know like the negative and positive frames. If you're not in the punishment zone or what we call around, uh, don't fuck around frames, 
which you're yeah. like negative, negative yeah, negative yeah. nine, negative eight. You know, unless you're out there in the boons, like if you just have a negative few or a couple or whatever, you're still controlling the frames. Exactly. So it's still your advantage in a sense. And a lot of like newer players kind of have trouble grasping that concept where even if you're negative doesn't necessarily mean that you're in this terrible situation or anything like that. And the reverse is the same too. Just because you have advantage doesn't mean you have the option to do whatever. So I usually, uh, if I hit with a down forward 4-2, I usually follow it up with a sidestep. Like you said, you're not in terrible frames. It's Negative 4 is definitely not like where you can't sidestep. You can get around some stuff, even with Marduk's hitbox. Um, it's kind of random. It kind of depends on what they throw out. Like Sometimes it'll get around jabs. Sometimes it won't. But um, I'll sidestep after it. And I will use his counter a lot after it. If people, if I see that people know it's at disadvantage and they'll try to attack, I will definitely use a counter in that situation. And sometimes that negative can help you out with those stuff because you don't have to time it as well. So you don't have yep, to sit exactly. there and wait for it. You just do it. It falls right into the window of when it's active. Yeah. Yep, I love yeah. that stuff <laughs> where I don't have to think or time. I just do it. <laughs> All so, right, so any, uh, any more wall juice that you got on there? Yeah, we got a, we got a couple things. Um, like you were talking about, his um, his wall carry is really good. I already gave the the standard wall carry. Um, that's pretty much what you're gonna do in open field. All it changes is where your uh, your bound goes. You pretty much do um, two down forward four two bound down forward three one two, and then your air throw of choice. Uh, that's his open open field combo. And then I just uh, recently discovered he has a really good back roll trap off of um, a modified wall carry. So if you're on the opposite end of the stage and you just kind of want to get them towards the other end, or if you're in an infinite stage and uh, you just kind of want to throw something different at them and see how they react, um, doing his regular wall carry, which is two, um, down forward three, one, two, cancel, down forward four, two, down forward three, and then instead of doing the one, two at the end, if you do the down one, it will flip them and fling them really, really, really far away. And a lot of people instinctually will just think it's okay to hold back in that situation. And they'll just roll backwards thinking they're safe, they're far away, they can block whatever's coming. And the the one pops them up so far that you can chase them down. And if they back roll, you get a free uh, down forward three, down one relaunch. Um, not even in the back, just regular, which is nice. And then when they get trained to that, you know, if they if they stay lying still, you can ground throw. If they tech roll, you can, you can tackle them, you can time a or a space, a unblockable tackle. So it's nice. It's very nice. It's nice. It's it's a little variety. Again, you gotta live with your setup. So I just like to throw a little different things here and there. Nice. So that. Um, what else were we talking about? Oh, wall juice. Um, as I was complaining about earlier, he doesn't have really good power mid wall splatting options. Um, ones that you think would work will only work at like zero range. Like not not you to the opponent, but when your opponent's back is like right against the wall and not a step further away. Um, back three, which is like a big boot to the face, it's a mid. Yeah. It's kind of what placed his back four, but it's not nearly as good of a move. So, no, not even um, close. <laughs> it doesn't have as much range. And again, it will not wall splat unless they are right against the wall. Um, Back four, you need a counter hit, and again, it won't splat until they're right back against the wall. Uh, down forward 2-1 is another one that is a good power wall splat, but it needs a counter hit. Um, that one will wall splat from pretty far away, but again, it's a counter hit. You can't rely on it. Um, back, back, one plus two, I'm finding I like a little bit more. I try to set it up. It looks like a baseball bat swing. I'm not sure if you're familiar with yeah, the move. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, you know, set it up with something that's like slight disadvantage and then backdash, see if they whiff, and then you can hit it. And that one will actually give you a decent uh, wall splat from far away. But um, other than that, he doesn't have really good wall splatting tools. It's kind of rough. Um, up forward three is decent. Um, doesn't splat from too far away and is very linear. And that's that's pretty much it. It's also um, really slow, but you know what? I actually like it because it's, a, it's yeah. a big power hitter that's safe. So. Yeah. It is. Exactly. I don't. I don't think it gives uh, advantage. The up four three. Yeah. What? What is it? It's, uh, it's even. It's zero. Oh, it's zero even. Oh, okay. Yep. Cool. Which is just as good. You can do a lot of things with that. Absolutely. Um, another Oki situation at the wall. Wall juice is. Um, you find yourself in a lot of situations where you can get a back turn bound by the wall, 
um, whether it's from while standing three or from uh, like a forward forward one plus two combo or from like a ground throw combo, you can get them into uh, back turn bound situations a lot. And if you have them right at the wall in a back turn bound, you do uh, back one plus two, which is a double hand uh, ground hitting move. And then you have a 50-50 after that, which is wonderful. Um, if you do a wall standing one, two after that, it will counter hit get up kicks. If they stand straight up, it will hit them in the back into a face first uh, power spot, which you can get some guaranteed ground damage or go for a ground throw that's really easy to time after that. And then if you do a uh, ground throw after the back one plus two, it will catch both side rolls or lay still. So you have a really good 50-50 for a lot of damage after uh, a back turn bound situation. Nice. So that's good. Um, real quick, the other launcher you see a lot is uh, his wall standing three, which automatically flips him over and puts him in a back turn bound situation. And this is where his stomp Oki comes into play, also off of uh, like forward forward one plus two. Um, you're basically going to do jab, down forward three, one plus two, bound into the up forward three plus four stomp. And it's kind of range dependent. Like you have to see how deep the while standing three hit because if they're really far away, you're not going to have enough range to hit them in the back like you want to. But if you hit it deep, then down forward three, down one will beat uh, get up kicks, standing straight up, and rolling backwards. And then obviously you have your ground throw for the side roll. So that's that's another dangerous Oki situation to watch out for. So much Oki. I know, I know. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Yeah, all of it is Oki, Oki, Oki. But that's what he is. No. Was that was that it that we got right now for wall juice? That's uh, that's pretty much it. I don't have a lot more for wall juice. Well, uh, okay. Well, let's start getting into it. Uh, some of his uh, his weaknesses because uh, I'm sh- some of you know a lot of people who listen to this podcast are listening to uh, uh, you know pick up the character, but at the same time they kind of want to know what to what the matchup is, how to how to get around and stuff. And uh, Dan and I, in, on this uh, podcast, we talk a lot about, like, the panic buttons and stuff. Mm-hmm. And Craig definitely had some panic buttons. Um, you yep. know, like, down back 12 is, yep. is a really good one. Um, it is. But for us, like, in order to be considered top tier and really reliable, you have to have that magic four or some sort of yeah. equivalent. And that's one thing hate, that he's really – Why do I hate magic four? Yeah. It's – I mean, <laughs> it's one thing I've, I actually – I acknowledge how good it is, you know, how a character needs it. And how it, it does, you know, kind of fit the tech and system, but how I wish it would go away. <laughs> I, I just wish that there's no reason that anyone should have a counter hit 12 frame launcher. Just it's hard, yeah, just, especially safe. Like that's that's the biggest pain in the ass. Yeah, it's completely safe. My problem is it's uh, even when you're at advantage. Like there's certain situations with Marduk where I, I play against. You, you might know the name um, Kevin from the forums. Julia player plays online a lot. Um, is his, his actual name is like his. Yeah, I think his forum name is Kevin. Um, I know online he goes by. Um, oh God, it's not coming to me. In any event, he's a really good Julia player, and he knows which side to sidestep me. He knows which side is my weak side, and he knows one of my best moves to track it is back four. If I hit him with back four, that's all well and good. I get like twenty two damage, but it's only plus two on hit. So at this point, I have to guess. Even when I'm advantage, if I if I do one two or one down two, it'll beat his uh, his magic four. But if I if he sidesteps, he gets to launch me for free with with his hop kick. Um, if I guess that he's going to sidestep and I do my back four, he counter hits me with the magic four, and it's like, oh my god, this is so annoying, you know. And then if I block the back the the magic four, it's like, oh well, that didn't really do anything good for me at all, you know. Well, just in general, Julia is just big pain in the ass but yeah and like i uh i really appreciate the podcast too like you said um i've been listening to most of them um to get anti-character knowledge i don't have a lot of players in my area i live in florida and we are very very spread out as a tech and state it's uh it's kind of shitty which is crazy because i know you guys have some good players out there like i've uh i've met and uh i every once in a while i'll talk to uh wayne gamble you know he's a really really good player um, uh, Wake Gamble, we have Devil Reborn, um, Daniel Phoenix down south, Sinister, like a lot of good players, yeah. but we're all really spread out. And I, in Gainesville, I live in Gainesville where UF is, a big-ass college, and you'd think we'd have more people playing. 
I don't have a single second player in the whole town. <laughs> well, yeah, that's kind of the reason that we started it up, because especially in the Midwest, we have that, that problem, like, in a big way. Because we have some yeah. players in Chicago, we have some players in Wisconsin, some players in the Twin Cities, and you have to go all the way south to St. Louis. you got some right. there. But, you know, you figure all these places... I happen to be fortunate enough that we're in Iowa, so we're kind of equidistant from everybody. But yep. that's still, for me, four hours to the closest, like, real center of competition. And for them, exactly. if they want to go all, you know, if somebody in Chicago wants to go play somebody in St. Louis, that's a seven-hour drive. <laughs> so yeah. it's just a big pain in the ass. But uh, I know a lot of people, you know, just even those, you know, hermits out there that just don't get out, <laughs> probably, you know, still want to pick up the game. and. Yep. And learn some uh, learn some stuff. So it's been really helpful, especially we all know how ass uh, the T six practice mode is. Like my biggest thing in DR was just go into practice mode, put record function on, and figure out what was punishable. And now it's not that easy. Yeah, I did. The one thing that can usually fix all your problems is the record function. And yep. why they would take that away, I have no idea. It's like your no, your no. practice mode can completely lack everything else. Give me a record function, I'll figure something out. Yep. <laughs> exactly. So, oh, I don't get it, but yeah, that's all we can do. So, okay, so we talked a little bit about uh, all the, uh, you know, his oaky traps and, and all that, and there's, uh, I think we touched on on everything pretty well, like his poking. I mean, there's not really much to talk about there. Um, I mean, he has a couple of things down for everybody knows down for, but uh, yep. you know, you have to take the good with the bad, even though you can't parry it, you can still launch it. So. Launchable and uh, negative on hit, really negative. On yeah, hit. so I mean, still something you have to consider. Um, but yep. but he's all about the big hitters, you know, getting around you uh, somehow with something. And uh, uh, if you were playing Mark, I, I want to ask this: like, how how would you slow somebody down? Like, what other aside from like uh, say down back twelve? What what sort of things would you do to slow somebody down if they're just bulldog real hard? You really have to. He's he's very weak to sidestep. Um, so you have to know which side to sidestep, which, in my opinion, I would say his weak side is his right. So you need to sidestep to your left. Um, back four tracks that direction, which is good, but it's only going to give you 23 damage, and it's only plus two on hit. You know, So it's not that good of an option. Whereas if you sidestep left, down forward one tracks left all day long. Easy, easy. Um, like, you know, Eddie's back to the get around everything move? Yeah. Down forward one eats it alive. I throw that shit out all the time against Eddie because it just it, it just destroys it. Um, it. It tracks left really, really well. So if I were to pick a side to step against Marduk, I would pick to his right. It's definitely his weak side. And then along the same lines, he does have a couple moves that track both directions really well, and I use them a lot. Um, you talked about panic buttons, and down forward one plus two, uh, the headbutt for me is one of his panic buttons. Uh, but the problem is, it's punishable. Not a lot of people know it's punishable, and I very, very rarely get punished for getting it blocked, but it is negative 11 on block. Um, the good thing about it is it tracks both ways. It's a uh, high crush, and it has one of those weird instances where it moves its hitbox back a tiny bit before he comes forward, so it will evade some things coming at him as well as high moves. Um, so it's really good, tracks both directions, plus three on hit, and forces crouch on hit. So nice. it's I was great... I wasn't aware that it was um that it was a uh, high crush. Yeah, very very much high crush. I, I guess I never really considered that move as a panic button, but that's a uh, it's good. Yeah, that it's good. Huh. But again, I'm exposing myself. Um, <laughs> negative eleven. Just block it. Take your jabs. That's but that's something that uh, I don't know. If I'm playing with Marduk, I kind of always see myself as being in a situation where I can probably get jabs. Because, like, you know, you figure down forward one, and that's jab yep. punishable. Um, down back 12 is more than jab punishable, but, you know, oh, yeah. you're, you're going to get something off of that. A lot of his stuff has, you know, is very punishable, so I'm always looking to fit jabs in somewhere. <laughs> but his, uh, his homing moves, in my opinion, aren't very good. I don't like them. Um, they're too slow. Uh, one of them requires a forward forward input, so you're kind of dashing up closer than you want to be anyways, and it comes out slow. Oh, that's forward, and then the other one... Forward toward four, which oh, is the goofy spin around yeah, kick. Um, don't like that. And then back to, again, is just really slow. It, it has range and it covers a lot of distance, but if they happen to backdash and you whiff, it's got horrible recovery on whiff. It's not very good on hit. Um, on counter hit, you do get some really good oki, 
Um, you get your basic stomp okey, you up forward 3 plus 4, and then you get your basic back turn stomp okey. But that's only if a really slow move hits on counter hit. So it's like his his homing moves that Namco has given him, not very good. You kind of have to do tracking in other ways. Um, I generally use back 4, down forward 1 plus 2, down forward 1, and uh, down 4 at times as well. Okay, well, uh, man, I think it's not, I think we covered most everything. Um, for any like last tidbits that you want to throw in there for? I got a, I got a couple things. Um, like we were talking about, his punishment is really weak. Um, he only gets jabs for a long time. He doesn't have an 11 frame. He doesn't have a 12 frame Punisher. Technically, he has a 12 frame Punisher, but it's forward forward two. So it's it's just really hard to execute and almost not worth it because you're probably going to mess it up more than you're going to hit it. So, at, so for jabs, would you recommend the 2-1 or the 1 down 2? I generally like 2-1 because it does a little bit more damage and you still have decent advantage. You still get plus 5 off of it. Um, 1 down 2 is nice because it gives a lot of advantage on hit. It's, uh, you know, plus 7 on hit. And only, I think it does uh, 4 damage less than 2-1. But I, I find myself a lot out of habit, but um, I just like 2-1. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, know, I know it's a lot of people who are 2-1. The, one, the only thing that I don't like about 2-1 is for whatever reason, I, not that you would ever have this happen, but, you know, if you fuck it up for whatever reason, the second one's high, so you can yes. duck it. But, they can duck yeah. it. Yeah, and that, that's why I like 1 down 2. <laughs> it saves me. It's this just, this comes in again with the, uh, the really smart players. Um, 2 Two one also has a mid extension that's a launcher, and if they get happy and start ducking it, like like I use it a lot in pressure strings. You know, if if they block it, it's plus three on block, so that's nice. Um, but smart players, um, a lot of the New York guys, oh man, they duck it a lot. But uh, two down one plus two is his regular jab into his shoulder launcher, and that'll launch for free. So it's like they might get happy and start ducking it and try to launch you, but you can do the same thing to them. So. It almost makes him want to stop doing it. And there's nothing you, know? you can do. You can't, like, twitch, duck it, or anything. If you're going to commit to launching him off of 2-1, then you're going to eat it. What about um, what about something might... quick, like, say, Steve's while standing one? Will that beat out the shoulder or not? I'd have to check. I haven't checked a really fast, good wall standing Punisher. Because I, I always – because uh, those situations are always really weird. Because I know, like, Bruce, um, mm -hmm. you know, he has the down forward one, and then you can do down forward one four, or you can yes. do the – mid knee yeah. but you can twitch duck it and if you yep. twitch duck it you'll block the low but right. if he doesn't do the low you'll come back up and be able to block the mid so right. i'm always looking for those weird situations out there so it's exactly um we can talk about uh he's got a couple moves advantage on block uh he doesn't have a ton anymore two one he's talked about two one two one two one, two one is is plus three on block so that's nice um one two forward one is plus four again it's high so they can duck it but it's also one of those strings that has a mid extension, and the good thing about that is the mid extension is one two three one plus two, and if the three hits, which is mid, the follow up one plus two is guaranteed, and it's like fifty damage yeah, total. I was gonna say that, that's so. damage. But again, it's it's rough because one two three alone is um, punishable; it's negative ten on block, and one two three one plus two is high. The the last headbutt is high, so you can get ducked and launched for that. Um, sidestep one plus two. The big elbow move, that is uh, plus one on block. Not that great advantage anymore. I don't use it too much. Uh, down one is even on block. The the tank elbow or whatever it is. That yes, used to be the most abused. Used to be really, <laughs> yeah, used to be really good. Now it's, uh, you know, it's okay. I throw it out once in a while using the sidestep setup. Um, that's pretty much it for, for advantage moves. Well, I think on hit, um, uh, down one is still really good because it gives you... Down one is good on hit, though. Plus five. Down one is very decent on hit. Really so. Um... Back to his punishment, he, again, he doesn't have a good 11 frame. He has a 12, but it's very impractical. So he's only getting jabs up to 13. At 13, he gets a chunk of damage, but you're at disadvantage, so you don't have to be too afraid of it. Um, 14, he gets back 4 or down 4, which, again, nothing spectacular. At 15, he has a really good long-range punisher in forward 1 plus 2 that can uh, punish things like high hachis, forward forward 2, and a couple other weird long-range moves. And uh, he also has a uh, down forward two, and then at 16 and 17 is where he gets his launchers. He gets uh, down forward one at 16, and he gets down forward three at 17. And also he gets up forward one plus two at 17, which um, in some situations has longer range than the uh, down forward three, down one, and is also really useful 
as a full crouch punisher because his full crouch punishment is also ass. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I know while standing 3 is 18, so... Yeah, while standing 3 is 18, so you can you can get um, up forward 1 plus 2 as a 17 full crouch launcher, but most big lows aren't going to leave them in a position where you can launch them with a high afterwards. Yeah. Um, the only one that I can really think of of note that, that's handy to have is uh, Bruce's full crouch down forward... Four or three, the big, the big low. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, that you can punish with up forward one plus two for a launch, which is nice. Hmm. That's exactly um, seventeen. Huh? Yeah, it's exactly negative seventeen. It looks like he's so far away and you can't do shit about it. But I launch Bruce a lot for that. That is goofy. Yeah, it's nice. Um, otherwise, he has wall standing one at uh, twelve frames. He does have a little mini uppercut at negative eleven for wall standing punishment. It doesn't do anything. It's like crap damage on hit, but as Good advantage. Um, he has wall standing four for 14, and then he doesn't launch until wall standing three at 18. So his wall standing punishment is not too good. Um, that's pretty much it for punishment. He's not not a punished character. Tekken Tag 2, though, supposedly. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. After uh, the nerfs, who knows? <laughs> Everybody's reporting he got a 15 frame down forward one. I don't know how much truth there is to this. Well, yeah, and they also gave him that new move. Uh, I don't know. Oh, what that, yeah, it was. yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see. I think uh, I don't know. I mean, Dan was uh, when we had USMC Ogre on. You know, Dan was talking like every time they do this and they have these location tests or these betas or whatever, the characters yeah. that are the best always end up getting nerfed. Yeah. So I mean, I hope that's not the case. You know, I hope the characters that have juicy stuff to keep their juicy stuff. But you never know. You never know what Namco is gonna do. There's two moves. Um, you were talking about tidbits and little weird things that I also want to touch on that um, I don't see used a lot, especially one of them. One of them, you know, is not bad. It gets used on occasion. But uh, this other one, you never see it used. And I found some stuff that actually makes it really beneficial. Um, the first one I want to talk about is his forward two string. Um, he has forward two one, and then he has forward two down one two. Uh, they're both really good zoning tools. Um, if I'm at a distance where I know the opponent doesn't really have anything that he can hit me with, um, I will a lot of times just toss out a forward two, um, mainly because it, it's really good on hit. Um, it's plus six on regular hit and does a decent chunk of damage. So you have great advantage. You're right there, so you can follow up. Um, if it hits counter hit, you get a full combo off of it, or you get the option to ground throw. But um, the option to do a combo is new to T6 because he got his down forward 4-2 bound. Um, so you can just go right into the down forward 4-2 and then, you know, filler, air throw ender, do decent damage. Um, so that's really nice. The the really good thing about this move is that if people get with Punish Happy with it, like like I say, I usually toss it out at a range where it's usually not going to hit. It's usually just tossed out as a bait or to, to prevent them from moving in. If people get really with Punish Happy, the one follow-up on normal hit, not even counter, uh, we'll give Crumple Stun into the full down forward 4-2 combo. Mm -hmm. um, so you can kind of toss out different versions of the string. Um, forward 2-1 is high, high. Both safe on block, which is nice. Um, they can duck the second hit, but that's where forward 2, down 1, 2 comes in. Uh, the down 1, 2 version is hit confirmable. Um, if you happen to get it blocked, it is negative 15, so some characters can launch punish it. But uh, it's a natural combo, so if you hit... If you whiff forward two and they duck, anticipating the one, um, you can hit the down one, two, into full combo. Um, so, you know, again, it goes with the high risk, high reward gameplay. Um, I like it. Um, I don't throw the full forward two, down one, two a lot, but uh, definitely the forward two and the forward two, one at range. Uh, it's a good tool for keep out. Similar to like a, a Lee back four, you know, where they're just kind of sitting back there four characters away, yeah. just tossing out their back fours, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and most of the time, if I mean, if somebody's going to try to advance on you after you whiff a four or two, usually that one is going to get a counter. Hit. So yeah. yeah, I mean, you're going to get some extra damage there too. So it has a really strange hitbox too. Like I've hit some things that have uh, that have tech crouch properties on them. I've it has a strange strange hitbox on it. Again, it's it's also the the string that will hit in the back after uh, one plus three air throw or one plus three regular throw. Um, which is absurd because a lot of highs do not hit in the back if people stand straight up, usually in the mid to, to fill that purpose. Yeah. So there's something funky with the hitbox on it. And you just feel like a bitch every time you get you eat it, too. You're just like, oh, I cannot believe I yeah. just eat it. And you got to wait 10 years 
for your character to crumple stuff. To crumple. Oh, yeah, exactly. Nice. Oh, sucks. And again, it's great that they gave him a guaranteed follow-up. Like, before, if you wanted guaranteed, you just had to hit a grounded move, and hopefully it was going to end the round, or try for a ground throw. But now, it's just like, take your 70 damage and move on. Yeah. Oh. Um, the other move I want to talk about, which has a very similar purpose, is uh, Valtuda stands forward 2, which is, it's just a straight mid-punch. Um... A lot of players ignored it, including me, for a really long time. We thought it might have had applications um, at the wall, like after uh, like a down forward 2-1 wall ender. After people tech rolled, you thought you could mix it up with like a Valtudo down 1 plus 2 low and the mid forward 2 to wall splat. But uh, it has no tracking in that situation. Like if they tech roll, it just goes right through them. It's just not good in that situation at all. So people kind of avoided it for a really long time. Um, I started playing around with it a little bit. And found out, again, it's one of these weird moves where it the active frames on it, it stays active a really long time. Like, after he sticks it out, it can still hit people for a minute when they're trying to dash in. So it's another one of those moves where you're at range. You can just kind of instant Valtudo stands forward two, toss it out there. Um, if it hits, it's really, really good. It has a mix-up that um, I don't think really anybody knew about until I started posting it. Um, you dash up, and... If they stand up straight, if they quick stand, you can float them very easily with a down forward 3-1 into bound, into, you know, mini combo air throw, which does, uh, I don't know, uh, like 50s, mid-50s damage. So you have an option to beat them if they want to stand straight up or do a get-up kick, and then you dash up ground throw for your other one, um, and it works very well. Uh, I was skeptical at first. When I when I first was trying that out in practice mode, I'm like, I don't know about this. It seems kind of seems kind of bogus, but then I started using it. Started using it on people, and uh, it works. It's uh, definitely a legit mix-up after it hits. And you wouldn't think, because it sends him so far away, that he would get Oki off of it, but it's there. Nice, very nice. It's also uh, one of those moves I know that uh, leaves you in that weird, funky situation, uh, frame situation that we were talking about earlier, because it's negative four. Yep. So it's not yep. it's not quite, you know, in the don't fuck around range, yeah. but it's not completely, you know, safe or, you know, gives an advantage or anything like that, but you... You yeah. got to be really careful about it. So, one more move, good a good uh, mix up at the wall after like a down forward two one ender. Um, a lot of times I will sidestep, following the opponent which way they tech roll, and then go into Valtudo stance. And uh, the main threat is obviously the low, the down one plus two. So yeah, Valtudo stance down one plus two, but you can mix it up with um, you can cancel the Valtudo with down forward, and then do full crouch one plus two, which is the the horns, the headbutt. Mm-hmm. And on close hit, it turns into the auto throw where he flips him over his back. The uh, the animation, especially in that situation, is very, very similar to the low. Um, because in both situations, he's ducking down really low and going towards your feet. Um, the one is a low that's going to take off, you know, upper 30s damage. And then the mid headbutt is uh, 40 damage. Kind of lose your pressure because it throws them away from the wall. But... Uh, you know, 40 damage, I'll take it, and if they block it, it's only negative 4. Yeah. So I'll try to, you know, I'll try counters or whatever else off that. But uh, I find it works a lot, just kind of no pattern to it, just mix them up randomly. It's good. Nice. That, yeah, that's all, you always got to be looking for that stuff because, you know, you may think something's really shitty, but it's always, it's something more to think about. We say that a lot, you know, it's give them something else to think about. Even if you... That's even, a point I, uh, I'm definitely glad you guys touch on because it's like, a lot of times in Tekken, people are just looking at the what's on paper. What's what's the frames? Is it unsafe? Is it not? And something I've come to realize is that a lot of the unsafe moves are unsafe because they're really good moves. You know, you couldn't have it be safe and have it be balanced. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So absolutely. it's uh, it especially goes along with Marduk's play style. You almost have to play unsafe to to kind of do well. But um, but he gets really rewarded for it. I mean, he gets he does, tons he of does. damage. So. It, move, the move list is always worth another look. You know, there's there's always some application you can find for something. Yeah. And it's just whether you want to take that risk. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, in, uh, uh, when, the opponent, when the opponent is in rage, uh, definitely not throwing that shit out. <laughs> for sure. And yeah, and whenever we uh, bring it up, you know, it's one of those things where even if the move is really shitty, all you have to do is just use it once, and then never yep. go back to it. They, they, yep. they right then you prove to them that you're willing to do it. So yeah. so it's in it's are you implant that in their mind. So 
And you also don't know if your opponent can block punish it properly. You know, yeah. maybe they don't know it's launch punishable. Maybe you can get away with murder. Yeah, and I always go back to the uh, um, the Brian instance of uh, down four three, the yep. snake sweeper or whatever the fuck it's called. Like yep. that move is for all intents and purposes against a good player. It's kind of ass because it's only real application is if you're trying to high crush something, but. Because most people can, I mean, block on a reaction, no big deal. But if you run into that right. one person, doesn't play Brian very often, and they can't <laughs> block it, like, that's that's match. <laughs> yeah. There is, I mean, they're oh. free low juggles yeah, all day. Absolutely. Uh, and then you start doing mid, normal heals, and it just gets nasty. Yeah, it just goes downhill from there. So. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, always something to think about. Um, so before we end the, the Marduk discussion, where, where do you put him on the tier list? Because for me, he's, like, right maybe a little below mid tier like but he's That's like pretty much where I yeah, play. right sitting in that big yeah. big huddle of characters in the middle so. team tournament top tier <laughs> <laughs> nice nice <laughs> one game i can beat anybody one game oh yeah absolutely <laughs> God, but um, they're so weird but <laughs> yeah. i don't know why people do that shit but. it's hard especially now um now that we've adopted the the longer sets the 3 out of 5 I find it is definitely uh, not advantageous for Marduk because it almost breaks down to, you know, how many times did you correctly guess to break that ground throw, you know? Yeah. Or, or how many times did you guess on that Oki? And the more, the longer the sets, the, the less favorable it is for Marduk, yeah, uh, unfortunately. You start developing that pattern, they start reading it a little bit. It's just the odds, you know, it's, it's rough. <sighs> Absolutely. So, uh... Okay, so what is your opinion then of uh, of tag two? Like, are you gonna who, who's gonna be your partner? Let me ask that because obviously you're gonna have Craig. As, as right partner. now, yeah. right now, um, the only other p- character I play, like I can mess around with a few characters, but the only character I would consider that I know inside and out and know the frames and know punishing and all that shit is Lars. Oh, nice. Um, so, so I might be playing Team Larduck. I don't know. That that's uh, not bad because you figure. Uh, Ooh, if I mean Lars, I mean he's a heavy hitter too, but he has way more options of getting people in the air. So yeah. you bring Marduk in, ooh, that's nasty. <laughs> yes, yeah. um, it's. Uh, I have a couple of characters I'm floating around. Um, I haven't started playing them yet, but I know Dragonov is really interesting to me. God, he's going to be such a good character in Tag Two. I mean, he's already. And, uh, we already believe him to be top tier. At least, you know. On I this like Dragon on, on this pod. I think he's really solid in this game. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. But I mean, just the the little changes that they've apparently made to him in Tag Two just seems mm-hmm. like he's going to be such a solid backup character. The thing that I, I tried to pick up uh, Dragon on a little bit uh, about a month ago, and the thing that was really throwing me off with him was uh, Marduk's juggles. Not that they're easy execution wise, because Valtudo cancel is a little rough. You know, it's not exactly a beginner thing. Yeah. But um, most of his juggles have the same notation. Like, you don't have to switch up your juggle for different launchers, you know? The only one you really have to do that for is while standing three. You have to use a different juggle for that. But otherwise, you're throwing your typical jab, bound, down forward three, one, two. That's it. There's nothing to remember. <laughs> when I started playing Dragon Off, I was like, fuck, i got to remember, like, five different juggles off all these different launchers. It was, uh, it was interesting. <laughs> Hilarious. And yeah. I never really even considered that, that you didn't have to, uh, you just did the same thing over and over again, no matter <laughs> what the situation. And that's pretty much how it is with Marduk. You don't ha- you don't need variety. It's it's pretty bare bones. That's what you're doing, you know? But uh, I noticed with, with Dragonov, he has he has to do different juggles off of his different launchers. Not, it's a, it's a necessity. He can't uh, do the same juggles. It's not going to, they don't, they won't hit in certain situations. Yeah, and I know it, uh, it tends to drastically change, too, if you're trying to do wall carry and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. Something I don't think that Craig really has to worry about. He just adds on to his regular juggle. Yeah, it's really, really easy to pick whether you want damage or wall carry. It's not, not an issue at all. Um, the other character I'm floating around playing in Tekken Tag 2 is uh, Armor King. Ugh, love me some Armor King. I really hope he's, he's good. <laughs> yeah, I I like... I just recently went a lot of his stuff in depth. You know, I kind of knew some stuff to anti him. But I just really went through his uh, move list with a fine tooth comb, and I was like, man, I like this character. I like the way he plays. I like the properties of his moves. Um, I like throws. I love throw characters. Oh, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm floating around playing him as well. So we'll see. It, it all kind of depends on 
a lot of different things. So we don't even know what the gameplay is like yet. So yeah, I mean, that's my big thing. It's like even you can't put too much into the move properties and stuff right now. You just kind of got to look at it and see what they're trying to do, and yeah. you know, judge from that whether or not you know you feel like you're going to like the game. But yeah, yeah. we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, they don't fuck it up too much. But in two years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whenever the hell it comes out, but disappointing okay so uh so i gotta do my product placement extends everybody out there extends there you go and then uh okay so now that we got that out of the way uh we always do our sound off so i hope you came prepared because uh, i'm gonna put it in, put it in your lap i got something okay so so tell us what what pisses you off what makes you angry something that pisses me off especially lately because i see it a lot um you know i frequent the show Ukraine forums uh on occasion and the language or the terminology that they have adopted is so fucking annoying that every single damn person on stream, on the forums, on the comments, they all sound like parrots. Every single one of them. It's all, stay free, get exposed, blah, blah, blah. And there's a couple others off the top of my head I can't remember, but it's just everywhere. It's rampant. There's just, like, all these catchphrases that are just so dumb, and everybody's parroting them, and uh, the commentators, everybody. It's just all over the place, and it's really starting to bug me. Like, it just makes everybody sound so unintelligent. Oh, man. It's bad. It's bad. I just put up a, a little thing on uh, on the VGF site. Uh, it's like a rant section, mm-hmm. and I just put up something about how uh, I hate people who can't fucking read and write. Because <laughs> nobody on the goddamn forum, I swear to God, knows how what the hell a shift key is. They have no idea where the period yep. button is. Where a comma yep. is, an apostrophe, they probably even can't spell apostrophe. Oh, it's just fucking terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, I'm so glad you brought that up. But yeah, the catchphrases. I'm glad we're in the same boat. Yeah, catchphrases are Annoying. the same thing. Same fucking thing. Yep. But that's what the internet is nowadays, you know. Indeed. Somebody says something, and then everybody else has to just kill it. <laughs> but, all right, well, uh, that's really all I have. Um, I think, I think we uh, covered Craig really well, uh, and I appreciate you coming on the podcast. You're the first East Coast person, even though, you know, you're kind of, well, no, you're not in Florida anymore, are you? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, you are. I live in Florida, but oddly enough, um, just real quick, I'm living in Atlanta over the summer, just uh, from May to August, I'm living in Atlanta. Uh, and then you're going back down to Florida. And I'm going back to Florida uh, in August. Yeah. Well, in either case, um, Isage was the first East Coast player, uh, and then you are the second, so, I mean trying to get as you know as much worldwide as we can we had good shit. we had some good uk shit. on so that was nice now more east coast love uh usnc ogre i think was actually our, has been our only west coast person. west coast but, but, but west they, coast. they have their bubble where they, you know they, they don't come out of it they're like no the rest of the world doesn't matter so anti-social <laughs> really you know you should get on you should get on young man river young man river. But you already covered bruce so <laughs> I, there's a lot of people that need to be on this podcast, but you know we have Tech and Tag Two coming up in the future, so we need yeah. we have plenty of slots that we need to fill. So, hey, real quick before we end this, oh yeah, um, and you can edit this out if you want, but um, are you by chance going to that Chicago tourney in August? Uh, the one that um, Hart Nana, yeah. that Rob's one. Oh, absolutely, because he's a uh, Rob is a really good uh, buddy of ours, and uh, he's yeah, been, he's been in Japan forever. So I know. Uh, yeah, this is a the first time we'll be seeing him after he gets uh, gets back to the states. So I've been talking with Billy. Uh, Billy's a good friend of mine from back then too. And um, I was telling him that I'm going to be up in Chicago uh, around that time, and it actually worked out really perfectly. I just saw today the date of the tournament, and we're going to be up there for a wedding. Unfortunately, the wedding is the day of the tournament, oh. but uh, I'm going to try. Get I'm out. assuming you guys aren't, like, leaving right after the tournament. You're going to hang out Sunday and shit, too. Yeah, usually uh, the that's the plan. We go up Friday, stay until, like, really, really late Sunday. Yeah, well, I'm I'm uh, taking Sunday, and I'm going to go and, and get together with everybody. So hopefully we'll get to meet. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, for all those who are listening to this podcast, check it out. <laughs> Arcana, yeah. Promo, promo. promo. <laughs> yes, promo. Free promo, even though I haven't talked to Rob at all <laughs> about this. But, yeah, if you want to meet... Some of us, Chicago, Chicago land. That's where we're going to be, August. It's on the SRK forums. Go look it up. August 13th. Yep, August 13th. And then, uh, and then I'm, I, all right, I take it you're not going out to Evo? 
Uh, no. Um, because of the living situation this summer, it's basically been a summer vacation for me. I haven't been working. I just saved up a bunch of money, and I've been chilling and climbing. I've been rock climbing all summer. And uh, so I haven't been working, so I don't have the money to make big cross-country tours like that. Practicing to be a MacGyver. Cause yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Josh, uh, Iceage always makes me grow my mountain beard every final round. It's something he requires. Yeah, right. That, that's what I like. Those are the kind of rules, the kind of tournament rules that I love. Like, you need a beard, otherwise no entry. <laughs> yeah, You basically. can't come in here. Oh, man, I love yeah. it. Well, uh, yeah, uh, I will definitely be at Ch- in Chicago for that tournament. Um, should be a really fun time, so hopefully you'll be able to make it out. Um, and, yeah, yeah, thanks again for coming on the podcast. I probably won't edit any of this, so everyone will know that we're going to be in <laughs> Chicago. But, uh, yeah, so that's all I have. Any last tidbits you want before I end it? Done. That's it. Done. Covered, I don't think we could have covered anything else, no. to be honest with you. That was, that was it. Yeah, I don't think so either, except extends. Extends, 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 extends because Dan isn't here to promote it. So <laughs> i got to pick up the slack. All right, well, uh, thanks again for coming on, and thanks, everyone, for uh, taking a listen. And uh, we hope you enjoyed everything, and we'll catch you next time.